Joseph Gould as commissioner way before this past week, the Pac-12 would still be in existence, but that's probably an argument for another day. But congratulations to Teresa. She will get to hand out a Pac-12 championship trophy in Las Vegas on March the 10th. We hope you join everybody for that last Pac-12 party in Sin City. Fourth quarter is underway. UCLA in control of 51 to 28. Jada Williams trying to turn a corner and throws the ball away. Cam Brown, the super senior, has checked back into the ball game and comes up with one of the easiest steals she'll get in her career. Yeah, again, the defense is just frustrating the Wildcats. Things that normally work are not open and the players are a little bit taller. Riz getting it into bats. Triple team comes, she gets it out. London Jones for three. Bottoms. Okay, my goodness, great ball movement. You know, you go to your option at the top and London Jones, boy, puts the dagger in. Jones is into double figures. She's got a dozen. Betts with yet another rebound, adding to her double-double totals. And Puello picks up the personal foul. She knew it right away, raised her hand. Yeah, she didn't hesitate raising her hand. She was saying, there, you know what? I'm gonna get a foul because I'm not giving you this basket. I think that's why UCLA has been so formidable here down the stretch of Pac-12 regular season play. There are just so many scoring options and everybody has been asked to score all season long so nobody is afraid to. Yeah, and they share the ball extraordinarily well and they rebound well too. So Betts is pushed from behind and the whistle blows. Brea Cunningham picking up her third personal foul. It'll be ball out of bounds underneath for UCLA. London Jones bouncing to create space. She's got 14. I love her game. Just cool and collected. And she's like the fourth option on this starting group. But when she gets her opportunity, she sure uses it. She is silky for sure. And that eyelash game, come on now. Look at this ball fake and here it is. It wasn't a three, it's a two, but she said I can shoot those too. Lost art of the mid range, love to see it. Inside to Isis Bay, good defense by Lena Zontak. The size, the length from UCLA. You can see why teams like Ohio State and UConn and Florida State and all the teams they beat in the Pac-12 have struggled. And they're called a offensive foul, the illegal screen or moving screen there on the Bruins. They have a pair of top 10 scores in the Pac-12 with Betts and Osborne. Right now, they're a one seed in the Portland Four region with possible date against Notre Dame or Indiana. The two seed is Texas in the other half of the projected NCAA bracket right now for UCLA. And I'm not saying Bruins fans should buy tickets to Cleveland now. I'm just saying get on Expedia or whatever travel site you use and check out the tickets. Just figure out how you're going to make your way east. Well, I'm very impressed because every player, whether they're starting or coming off the bench or the Bruins, plays hard, is efficient, and is really talented, highly skilled. Yeah, the basketball IQ just jumps off the chart. Cunningham off the mark from the mid-range. Ball is poked out of bounds by the Bruins. It will stay with the Wildcats. Seven minutes and 15 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter of play. Want to shout out uh, assistant coach Tasha Brown for UCLA. She had the scout, and it was effective as Pueyo can't connect. And Tosh, you would think that this UCLA team hadn't won a game in a month and a half. The way that she was just wanting perfection on every drill that they ran. No, we didn't quite do that. You were a half step off. Go, go, go. It was really impressive. 
Well, they must have listened to this scout because they are playing focused and with a purpose. Shot clock getting low. Iwala trying to get it to Rice, and that's another turnover. That's about the only thing that you can go, ah, gee, they can clean that up because it's 22 turnovers for UCLA, and that's very uncharacteristic. Well, and that is a credit to Arizona's pressure, and as you said, that's the only thing that you can say that they need to improve on here. But this team is focused and uh, very, very good. And in the Bruins' defense, everybody turns the ball over against Arizona because they lead the Pac-12 in steals. 56-28 is the count. Advantage UCLA. Skyler Jones misses everything. Yeah, they're just playing with not as much confidence. And again, that's the defense from the Bruins. Skyler Jones was scoreless in the first meeting against UCLA earlier this season. She does have two today. So that's an improvement. But she needs a lot more. London Jones just lost the handle. So the turnover count continues to mount. Three turnovers in the last three possessions for UCLA. Elena Puello trying to shake Jaquez and does. Arizona needed that. Cuello's got nine. Arizona still doesn't have a player in double figures. The captain is the closest. Iwala getting it to Rice. She's blocked by Cuello, but it winds up with Hawkins right at the rim. Hawkins just finds a way, always around the ball. Gabby's got 13. And has made every shot. Want to shout out. SID Corey Mueller and Haley Lofton for UCLA and Arizona, respectively. As the and all the sports information directors in the Pac-12 who supply all of our broadcast crew with all the information that we need to do our jobs. Thank you so much. London Jones earning a trip to the free throw line as Jones picks up foul number four on the day. It's just been a tough day at the office for Skyler. Tough day, you know, the things that normally work for her, she's really good as a slasher. Yeah, last game was a career high with 19 points. Just, she's struggling today along with her teammates. London the cutie will step up to the free throw line. She gets that first one to roll home. Her favorite player in the WNBA, freshly minted member of the Seattle Storm, Skylar Diggins-Smith. Gets them both. And I see a little of that Skylar want to and moxie in London. Again, another Noe Quinn player. I wonder if there is a connection. Noel Quinn, UCLA Bruin, great, doing a tremendous job rep representing UCLA at the next level, as well as staying no connected with Corey Close and the current group of Bruins. We are going to step aside. UCLA is in control of 60 to 32. Grab a snack. Welcome back to the McHale Center. Only four three-pointers have been made today by both teams, and that young woman, London Jones, has made all of them. She is four for seven from three, and she leads all scores with 16 points. She's been terrific, Joan. Oh, she's been terrific, and good defender, too, but the little lefty, and she's the shortest player on the floor. Yep. She can fill it up and quick and smart and she's having herself a game. She takes a seat as she leads the entire Pac-12 conference with 78 made three-pointers this season. Now that's not first in the nation. Caitlin Clark has that honor with 155 plus, which is incredible when you think about it. As Mary Martinez can't get the lay-in to fall, and here come the Bruins again, pushing pace. New Bruins on the floor, number 33, Amanda Muse, the freshman forward. Cam Brown, Christine Iwala, Kiki Rice, the point guard, and Gabby Hawkins. Rice trying to get it to Brown, the miscue. 
helpful for Arizona to get the ball down the floor, but they can't get a fast break bucket. Three on the way by Martinez. No. Isis Bay didn't get called over the back. And then Iwala just couldn't hang on to it. But they say it is the Bruins basketball, and I believe I hear every single one of the 7,800 fans in attendance complain, and the call has been changed. Good job by crew chief today, Lisa Jones and her group. Well, that is going Arizona's way. Arizona will face the University of Washington on March 6th in Las Vegas as Isis Bay connects at the rim. That was a nice pass there by Jada Williams. The Bruins have that first round bye in the Pac-12 tournament. They will meet the ASU Utah winner. And after Utah got punched in the face by the University of Washington today, Arizona State is probably thinking, why not us? Jaquez leaving it short. Muse can't come up with it. And Courtney Blakely has numbers with Pueyo on the ring. Oh, that was beautiful. That is a classic two-on-one. And that was fired up the crowd. Kiki and Rice has to call timeout to get out of trouble. That defense was smothering. Let's take a look at that fast break. This was a classic fast break smart here by Blakely, made them look like she was gonna shoot it. And pretty finish there by Pueyo. Unselfish basketball. That's how you win games. Unfortunately, the Wildcats aren't gonna have the opportunity to do here, but you know what? You can play this last three minutes hard and play it together and be focused. And that's gonna help you when you leave for Las Vegas. Absolutely, because really, Arizona's on the bubble here for this NCAA tournament. They need to get a win and finish strong here as best you can and then get focused for your next game and next opportunity in Las Vegas versus the Huskies. Corey Close gave me a laundry list of what she wanted to see from her Bruins today. Ball security, they're not going to grade well there, but they attacked early in offense and they have rebounded beautifully. They were plus 21 on the glass in the first meeting, and today the advantage is 39 to 16. You know what? That's pretty good on the boards. Their mm -hmm. shooting percentage is just under 60%. Um, they've done a lot of things well. As we said, the only thing that they're going to be upset with is the turnovers, which are a lot. There's hard to believe 25 from the Bruins. UCLA has a net ranking of number six. Corey Close scheduling so tough in non-con. And then in conference play, 12 up and five down, soon to be 13 up. And they will finish in third place. Kiki Rice with the shot clock winding down. She has to fire. Bay is there for the rebound. Blakely has all kinds of speed, but smartly gets it back to her point guard. Another tip ball. Blakely in the trees, doesn't matter. That's a nice move by Courtney Blakely. She plays so hard and her first step is incredible. Blakely's got six points, which matches her total from the first time these two teams met. And Arizona's on a 6-0 run, which feels like the longest run of the game for them. Hawkins just has the ball taken away by Pueyo. And you gotta love the Arizona faithful just cheering on everything positive that has happened for these Wildcats today on a tough day here at McHale. Jada wanted the foul, didn't get it. Kiki Rice bouncing beautifully. Wanted to get it to Muse, but Pueyo was there. Anytime 13 is in the area, you got to be careful. Bay thought she was fouled. And Kiki Rice says, enough of this up and down. Let's just settle down. And Corey Close would like some time to talk to her group. 
She wants to stop the 6-0 run by Arizona and definitely put a stop to the turnovers. Four of them in the last four minutes of play, Joan. Well, that's why, you know, you would think, why is she calling timeout? There's, they have the game one, there's a little over a minute left. And it's just, as you said, to clean up these things, the end of the game, you want to finish strong. And, you know, coaches, and it's not just about winning, it's about winning the right way and doing the right things. And I think on the other end for Arizona, they just want to continue playing strong. They're on a 6-0 run and just play smart. Taking a look at the top 16 seeds in the NCAA tournament. Pac-12 showing up and showing out. Two one seeds projected at this juncture with Stanford and UCLA. And with the season started, Joan, I wanted three. And we had slippage from Colorado and Utah. Oregon State just ran into the injury of Regan Beers. They were going to steal a one seed. But right now, it's going to be Stanford and UCLA on that one line. USC as a two, Oregon State a three, and Colorado as a four. Absolutely outstanding. Well, there's, what that means is Pac-12 in the last year, it's, I feel the best it's ever been, top oh, and bottom. Easy. And the best conference in the country, and it's not even close. And the teams that are taken by the WBIT, it could be a Fab Four comprised of Pac-12 teams. Steal by Williams. She pushes ahead to Martinez, trying to get it to Blakely and Cameron Brown. Terrific defense, but Blakely comes up with it. Pueo for three. Just off the mark. Brown with another rebound. She says, let me dribble out of trouble. As this Arizona defense still swarming with under a minute to go. Scoring drought of better than four minutes for the Bruins. So London Jones is back. Jones trying to hang on to it, bouncing to Muse. Ball rolls out of bounds, and it will go to Arizona. I think that's another turnover, Corey Close. You know, <clears throat> she loves her team, but let's clean this up. My goodness, 29 turnovers, hard to believe. That's a fat number, no doubt about it. But the number that really matters is the W. Absolutely. The 60 scored. Pueo, triple is good. Elena Pueo's got 16 to lead Arizona. We got it, Pueo. Adia Barnes wants to call timeout. She's just so using it to sub, to get some subs in. Take out her seniors. Once her seniors celebrated. Number four, Skylar Jones entering the game. Skylar Jones number checks in as Pueo gets a round of applause. Oh. Entering for Arizona, number 11, Brooklyn Rose. The seniors as Mary Martinez and Elena Pueo getting a well-deserved round of applause. Yeah, this is hard, you know, in your last game, last game here in McHale, all these memories, hard way to go out, but they should hold their head high. And they still have a lot to play for. Absolutely. Go to the Pac-12 tournament, yes. get that first round win against University of Washington, and just see what kind of damage you can wreck. Mary Absolutely. And we're going to take a look only for a little bit, though, of the walk-on. Well, she's no longer a walk-on. No, she joined the team in February. She is Brooklyn Rhodes. And she's on a full ride right now. Absolutely love to see that. Number 54 out of St. Louis, Missouri. As the love is shown by the 7,800 strong here at the McHale Center. And she's normally number 54, but she is wearing 11 right Love now. That. Want to thank producer Greg Frampton, director Scott Girafo, statistician Jeff Bowe, stage manager Angelica.
Everybody in San Ramon, California, and everybody here in Tucson, Arizona, thank you so much for doing so well for all of our Pac-12 teams and schools. Hard foul as Santa goes flying, and she earns a trip to the free throw line. Yeah, this was a hard foul. I think it was definitely a little bit on the arm, but on with the body there by Cunningham. And that's her fourth. So Jada Williams gets a nice round of applause too as the fans are appreciative of the work that the freshman has put in this season. Santak off on the first free throw, shooting 83% this season. She gets the second one to go. For a fifth straight game, UCLA will hold an opponent below 55 points, John. That is a gigantic flex to take into the Pac-12 tournament. Isis Bay, another senior who has a year of eligibility left, receiving some love from the fans as well. And with that, Arizona advanced the basketball and will take it on the side and We'll see if they take a shot here. Blakely trying to turn the corner, find some room at the rim, can't connect. And that's just the kind of day it's been for Arizona as UCLA gets the win by a final count of 61 to 41 as they have held opponents now to 55 points or less during their five game win streak as they close out the last Pac-12 regular season game. The Bruins bounce the Wildcats for a third straight time along the way. And of course up next for both teams, it's the Pac-12 tournament in Las Vegas starting March 6th. The Bruins have that first round by and it will be Arizona taking on UW March 6th. Final thoughts from you, Joan. What impressed you most? UCLA is really good. I know they had a bunch of turnovers. Yep. And they want to do better with that, but they have a squad. Top to bottom, height, shooting, basketball IQ, skill level, and I think mentality. Yeah. All right. Let's bring in Lauren Betts. Back-to-back -back double doubles for her on this Arizona swing. She's got 10 double doubles on the season. Lauren, what was working for you today? Um, I got to give a shout out to my guards. They did a really good job finding me tonight. Um, I think that's what we worked on all practice. I think Colorado, we kind of um, missed out on some post touches, and I think the guards just did a really good job executing today um, and finding me, so I got to give a shout out to them. You know, uh, watching you, you are so skilled around the basket, Thank you. but the area that I really think you've improved because you get doubled and tripled a lot. Yeah. The passes you kick out to your guards or perimeter players, is that something you've worked on too? Yes, I mean, listen, I've been doubled and tripled teams since I was in high school. So <laughs> that's something I've been doing my entire life, but I think definitely um, with the shooters we have, I mean, DZ, like Charisma, I mean, it's just so easy to find them, and they do a really good job talking to me when I'm getting doubled. So, um, yeah, honestly, just great job for my guards again. Well, you get it done offensively. You also come through on the defensive end as a rim protector. You have the three blocks. This is five games in a row for your group, Lauren, holding opponents to 55 points or or less. What's working for you guys on the defensive end? I mean, listen, from the beginning of the season, our defense didn't start out amazing like we wanted it to, and I think the coaches just really pushed us in practice to work on our defense and get those stops, and I'm just really proud of all the effort we had today. I mean, it's not an easy job, but we get it done, and we work really hard in practice every day, so. What excites you most about Las Vegas? That's the next stop for your Bruins. Oh my gosh, well firstly, hopefully winning, but <laughs> after that, I mean, just getting that experience with my teammates. I mean, I'm just so excited. Obviously, new team I get to go to Vegas with, so I'm just so excited for this group of girls. We work so hard and I can't wait to show out. Well, the best thing I can tell you is just keep doing whatever you guys are doing, whatever you're eating.
Because you have a very, very good team. Best of luck. Thank you. Along the way, best of luck in Las Vegas. And try to cherish every moment. I appreciate good that. Good luck and good health the rest of the way. I went ahead and told Bruin Nation to just check out flights to Cleveland. <laughs> just price them out. See what it looks like. You know, just putting that out in the atmosphere. Yes, I agree. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thanks, thanks so much for the time, Lauren. Thank you really appreciate me. it. Thanks. Terrific group for Corey Close as fans traveled from California to make sure that they could see UCLA finish the regular season strong in the last Pac-12 game that will be played in the toughest conference in women's college basketball. Arizona celebrating its team and its seniors as we say so long from Tucson. Joan Bombasini, it has been an absolute pleasure to work with you. Everybody at Pac-12 Networks, thank you so much for this run. It has been life-changing and such a blessing. For Joan Bombasini, I'm Cindy Brunson. For everybody at Pac-12 Network, 